Hello YouTube, this is Marcus with Design IY, and today we are getting into the garage design. Basically starting from scratch, this is what I started with. We do have a small build video on the just on SketchUp in general. This program, the program I use to make the walls, the windows, and uh, to get all the items in there from the 3D warehouse to make them the right size. Uh, so these are my items and uh, or really similar to them, but they are all the right size, taking up the right amount of room in the same size of garage that I have. Just wanted to establish that. If you haven't seen that video, definitely take a look at it so you can see why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, but I'll jump right in. This is what I started with. I knew I needed a chop saw. I knew I needed a table saw. I had an air compressor. I had this table got a desk dad gave me this anyway this is what I started with not a whole lot I'll start off by saying I am NOT an expert at garage design I do design kitchens and baths for a living so I have that similar uh, path of logic that you gotta follow as far as functionality is concerned and I might refer to that uh, throughout the course of it uh, just kind of my process of thinking anyway uh, this is the only garage I have. It's not going to entirely be a workshop. It also has to house my car uh, because it is a garage. So I'm going to keep all these things in mind, right? Um, there are three main things that you need to keep in mind. And those three things are, uh, A, how can you double a purpose? Uh, meaning no wasted space, make it efficient. Uh, how can this actively be the entire garage, be a workshop? and at the same time the enti <clears throat> entire garage or as much of it as possible work as a garage to work on the car um, so you gotta make it function for both and it's gotta be easily uh, moved so you can't have permanent mounted fixtures that you gotta pick up and move uh, just to get the car in and out so to speak so that's the first thing uh, dual purposes the second thing is you gotta look past the space that an item takes up like say this uh, particular table saw you can't just look at the footprint of this table saw and say, uh, well, that's a good place for the table saw. For instance, I can't just put this uh, table saw, oops, I get up out of the floor. Can't put this table saw up against the wall because what happens when you push a board past, uh, past the blade there? You just hit the wall and you don't go anywhere. So instead, what you really need to look at is the maximum size board. Let's just throw out a number and say it's a 4x4. Four four. So we got 48 inches this way, 48 inches this way, 48 inches this way. And we do that four times for the, all four possible corners that you could be cutting in. And this is actually taking up 8 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet. So um, it's not just the footprint. It's what how you will be using it. So you have to envision yourself using these things in order to figure out how much room they're actually going to take up. And then, of course, the third thing uh, that you need to take a look at is just the location of things. So what makes the most sense based on the architecture of the room? Of course, we have our garage door here, which is the side that I'll be using for my car. And then the garage door here, which will probably uh, remain shut for the most uh, bit of the time. And we'll actually use this to get in and out of the garage as well, unless I eventually put a door in it. But right now I don't have a swing door. Um, the windows are the primary thing uh, that comes into play uh, when we're looking at things. So if we're talking big, tall storage unit that you'll have to purchase, uh, that I'll have to purchase because I don't have it in here. We're talking air compressor because this is mounted on the wall or even uh, a table saw obviously we can't have it up against the wall anyway uh, any type of shelving uh, mounting things on the wall the walls are heavily used that's what you you know push things up against the wall and so forth you can't do that uh, when there's a window in the way clearly otherwise you cover up the window or don't have any room to mount something to um, so you have to find a logical use for things that only fit under the window. You, it's a good place to start uh, to find the most usable thing uh, if placed under the window and start by placing that there and then design around it. So those are the three things that we are going to look at. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, I will go ahead and say that my shop isn't like everybody else's shop. I'm not a millionaire. I don't have all these cool tools, although I did spend several 
well, a couple thousand dollars on tools uh, when I bought my house. I worked that into the fund because I knew I needed a chop saw, I knew I needed a table saw. But our three main tools that we'll be looking at is our air compressor, our chop saw, and our table saw. Um, so I'll go ahead and switch over to the blank slate. So the process, the thought process here, is uh, find a location for the tools where they can be used effectively. And I'll go ahead and show you the answer to that question, or at least my answer to it, is this is where the tools will be placed. We have our table saw, we have our air compressor, and we have our chop saw. So our chop saw, oops, I'll go ahead and show you on the table so you can get an idea of what's going on here. We have the chop saw. We need eight feet this way at a minimum and eight feet that way at a minimum if we're going to be able to utilize the dual bevel feature or the, the compound miter. It's a dual miter. You can miter it from either direction. Um, the, the convenience of that, right? That means you have to have eight feet available this way, eight feet available for that way, assuming that uh, we have a maximum of an 88 or a 96 inch uh, eight foot cut. Uh, if we're doing 16 foot molding or 12 foot molding this wouldn't quite be ideal but at least 8 foot I do have and uh, this is the desk that I got left with from the house this is a desk that my dad gave me and this is the one I made out of uh, the old exterior door on the back of my house uh, <laughs> funny story I actually used the hole that was cut for the deadlock and the doorknob as a wire chase uh, to go down here but anyway uh, this is the location for the chop saw, or at least what I came up with. And so as not to give it away, I'll go ahead and erase the objects again. <clears throat> of course, the table saw has got to be somewhere in the middle of the room. It had to be somewhere in this general area. wanted it out of the way so I could drive my car in and out when it wasn't in use, so it would remain stationary. But at the same time, you got to get wood here, you got to get wood here. And all, all around the table saw is just going to have to be open if you're going to be using the table saw. Lastly, uh, <clears throat> we're thinking of dual purpose here, right? So this air compressor is going to be vital uh, to work on the car for filling up tires and pneumatic tools and whatnot. But it's also vital for the wood shop portion because you use a lot of pneumatic tools, uh, air nailers, air staplers, etc., uh, cutoff wheels, whatever. <clears throat> so uh, this had to be centrally located so that I could get it uh, and use it for my car uh, really easily and also then use it for the wood shop easily. And of course we didn't want this air compressor right in the middle of the floor uh, for you to trip and stumble. So I did push it up towards the wall and then mounted the hose reel directly above it. So now we have those laid out. Now we can start l <coughs> designing around it. I forgot to mention that, of course, the chop saw works really well under the windows. Um, you probably figured that out. But if we just have molding here with those big long tables you saw, uh, nothing needs to be there where the windows are. So we started with our basic layout and uh, still have enough room for our car. So that'll be our checks and balances. We'll make sure the car fits. Uh, <clears throat> moving on from there, um, I decided to jump right to the lighting. That was the first thing that really needed done because you couldn't see anything in the garage. If I'm going to work in the garage, i got to be able to see in the garage. So uh, I drew out the ceiling joist and I decided to add can lights. I have a couple videos uh, when I was doing this. I'll go ahead and add them. But in short, um, I had to go ahead and add ceiling joists in there in order to make the cans fit. Um, <clears throat> I need, of course, good lighting in our areas where our tools are at, so especially in the center area where the table saw is going to be and the air compressor, and then also this uh, chop saw. I had already had a basic idea that my storage was probably going to end up in the corners, since the corners is useless except for, for storage, um, so I left those areas kind of dark. And so I went ahead and threw the lighting in there. This is the pattern I came up with for can lights to get a really good even spread of lights. You can see um, this light's going to work really well for the engine bay of the car. And then I have lights on the other sides, uh, just all around the car. Really helpful. And especially if I have some desk space here, or table space, I get one light on either side. Leave the corners dark, like I said, for storage. And then this gives me good lighting right over my chop saw and some just general ambient lighting as well. So this was my best spread that I could come up with using uh, 12, 12 lights. And then, yeah, of course, focused lighting in our center area that we'll be using for both spaces. 
if you're wondering this space is where the garage doors fold up so at the moment I don't have a lighting solution for this half of the garage I'm working on it but as soon as I get that I'll let you know uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off so we can see so take the lights out and the ceiling joist anyway uh, now it's time for the objects so you can kind of see how this worked out uh, <clears throat> we have the table desks of course for the chop saw that you already saw some open shelving here in the corner just threw it in there last bit and then we need at least one good table for the car area uh, to work on things for the car so we have that table there and uh, we'll of course need this table and a table that we can actually move around so if we have a larger object wider than the size of these tables we'll be able to place it there and walk all the way around it I do a lot of car audio stuff so a subwoofer box is what I was keeping in mind that being said you can kinda of see the general layout uh, where I decided to place everything um, but there's already one thing that's really coming to mind, right? And that's, uh, okay, now we have a lawnmower. It's just kind of thrown in here. I don't have, like, a little niche for it, a uh, niche for it. And so if it's going to be housed in the garage, i got to pay special attention when I'm at the store purchasing this to get a lawnmower uh, with the handlebars that fold up so that I won't be running into the handlebars when I'm trying to use the shop. So that's already one thing, uh, one headache that I can save myself from uh, just by making this ahead of time. We'll have several of those. Also the toter for the garbage, um, it's in there now. Uh, it probably won't stay inside the garage just because I need to get electricity to the table saw and that's where my electricity is going to come from. So I'd have to put those things over the top of the cord. So that's going to probably go out. Um, that being said though, uh, it's pretty basic after that. Uh, dual purpose again over here with the air compressor. Uh, I had the two tables there with the air compressor in the middle and it was just taking up a gob of room. Like you can't use anything over the top of the air compressor. Unless of course you build a table over the top of it and make it usable. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, table over the top and ideally this will be on casters. I have not built it yet at the time that I'm making this video, uh, but as soon as I do make this, I'll go ahead and link the build uh, video to that. Now you notice at the beginning of this video you saw a red table and that was the table that was in my basement uh, that the people left over. I got to looking at it and then they built it in the basement. I couldn't get it out uh, of the basement unless I disassembled it. So instead of doing that, I modeled this table and this table off of um, that red table uh, because I designed with it and so now I just mimicked it and made the same thing. So I made two instead of one so I could create this symmetry that you're seeing here. Anyway I have a build video for that. Link to it here. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What else? Uh, let's make sure the car fits. Okay the car fits and let's make sure the lighting works. So the lighting works well with the car. You can see you got that engine bay light like I said and then the lighting around the car that worked really well. Um, so let's no longer do checks and balances. I would encourage you not to stop at this point. It looks like we have everything, but there are things that could cause headaches yet to be designed, and that's going to be a lot of the electrical, okay? So this is fine and dandy. This is where we want our tools, but how the heck do you actually get the tools there? So I'm going to go ahead and erase the objects real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I need um, some sort of electrical solution. If you are familiar with tools at all, you'll know that a chop saw and a table saw is anywhere from 10 to 16 or 17 amps, uh, usually 15. And an outlet is usually 15 amps, unless you get a commercial one, then they're 20. If you're using 12-2 wire, then we're looking at a maximum of 20 amps that that wire can handle. So, long story short, every single one of these fixtures, these um, major tools so to speak is going to have to have a dedicated circuit otherwise you can be using the chop saw and your air compressor kicks on and then you have to flip the breaker uh, so you don't want that or you run the risk if you just put a bigger breaker in there uh, then you run the risk of burning wire you also don't want that so uh, I color coded it now I have green that's going to be the only outlet that's green in here and that's uh, one circuit just for the chop saw dedicated to the chop saw um, same thing over here with the air compressor. I have an orange one. That's a dedicated outlet to uh, the air compressor. And then this cyan outlet over here uh, will be dedicated for the table saw. And again, unfortunately, I'll have to run a cord here and put something over it to make sure we don't trip on it. 
<clears throat> because I can't put an outlet in the concrete without trenching and I'm not doing that. These dark blue outlets are just a 20 amp shared uh, circuit that I'll have for everything else. It'll be able like to have a shop vac. Um, I'll probably have like a coffee pot or a boom box or um, miscellaneous things maybe under cabinet lighting. Um, and so they can all be on the same circuit. So anyway, uh, why is this important? This is very important because once I put the objects back in, you can start to see where I have had to design around them. Your first intention or your first initial thought is to put your tall cabinet next to your wall cabinet and not leave this space in between. But I had to in order to get this outlet down there, otherwise I'm coming in and around and then I wouldn't be able to hang my tools here. So uh, this is how the uh, conduit had to go. Also. I realized that I'm going to have to get conduit down to this outlet down here for the air compressor, so I'm going to have to have some kind of stoppers uh, keeping this table from going back all the way so that it doesn't pinch the air hose that will be going down there and the conduit. <clears throat> so just small things like that is going to save you a ton of headache if you know that you're going to have this conduit there ahead of time. The other bit, um, and this is minor, it's, it seems rather minor anyway is if you have the ceiling joist and the can lights there you can make sure that your boxes aren't going to run directly into a ceiling joist so um, if this was an indoor thing we would be running plumbing we'd be running electrical we'd be running all of that before we actually start the job to make sure that everything's planned and accounted for so you don't have any headaches or surprises down the road <clears throat> Anyway, this video has been going on a little bit longer than I wanted it to, so I just wanted to go ahead and cut it there. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you feel like I suck at uh, designing garages, then tell me what, everything I did wrong and how I should fix it in the comments below. Because again, this is the first time I've ever had a garage, first time designing a garage. And I think it makes log logical sense, and I'm proud of the decisions I made, but I would love to hear your opinion. So please let me know how you feel. That being said, though, this is Marcus with Design IY. I'm signing out until next time. Hopefully next time we'll get inside the house and start doing some real design work and out of the workshop. Uh, but until then, check out all the build videos for me making this workshop actually come to life. Thanks again, guys. Uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, definitely do that so you can see what this workshop uh, actually makes in the future. Thanks. Signing out. Latest. Thank you.